Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Hello, dear puppy parent friends. How are you this week? You know, Gabe, I have seen so many posts lately about pups making their way over the Rainbow Bridge, and they just break my heart. We just found out that your parents' beloved pup, Bella, our Jack Russell niece, as it were, has cancer of the liver. Yeah, and my mom, she called me crying, and she told me about it. And they knew she wasn't doing well when she didn't bark at the neighbors walking down the street. That's how you know something's wrong with it, Jack. That's right. Man. And what amazes me is how strong dogs can fight the illnesses they have. They're so good at not letting us see what's going on, how bad they're hurting, and and they'll hang on for as long as they can. They're tough and stoic like that. Yeah, you, you can't keep a good dog down. And now we don't know how long Bella has or if my parents plan to get a second opinion, but for now she's still with us. But truth is dogs are only with us for a short time and then we have to let them run free in the heavens. So today we will honor and celebrate the dear pups who have gone to the other side, cross the rainbow bridge as they say, starting with our JRT pup, Wiggles. Wiggles was so super sweet. He was really our first dog together, although he was my family's dog before you completed the picture. But once he knew you, he was smitten. We ceased (laughs) to exist. (laughs) Oh, yes. I know. There was no going back. We were in love. Mm. (laughs) We said, see you later to Wiggles about 10 years ago now. Can you believe it's been that long? I can't. Man, that's amazing. (sighs) And he was over 17 years old when he passed. And I I think he really held on that last couple of years to be with you. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And one of the things I loved about him was if you ever went in the pantry without giving him a treat, or even sometimes if you just walked by the pantry, he would fuff you. Yeah. He'd be like, (laughs) Like, how dare you? (laughs) How dare you not give me a treat if you're in that vicinity? Yeah. Oh, and one of my favorite memories was when he was really old and sick at that time. He was probably over 17 at that point when uh, we brought home this big fluffy bed from Costco because he was using this ratty old pillow for the longest time. He loved it. But we got this huge bed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like like for a Rottweiler. Mm -hmm. And... We laid it down next to him. He said, hey, it's yours. And then he came over and he hugged each of us with his neck. It yeah. Was like, it was the coolest thing. Like he was thanking us. And then he laid down on the edge of it. Yes. He's like. Not the middle of the edge. He's like, can I have, like, I really can have this cushion. It's all mine. Yes. <laughs> Oh, and the doggy ice cream. Do you remember oh, that? Man. That's, that's that's my other favorite story. <laughs> <laughs> so it was when we came home from our honeymoon and he shunned you so hard. Yeah, he knew something was up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, that's the longest we had been apart from him. And yes, and, in a while. And things had changed drastically since we had left. And so <laughs> we tried to raise his spirits by bringing him this doggy ice cream. And then when you reached over to pet him while he was licking the ice cream, he kind of rotated around mm-hmm. so you couldn't touch him because he'll take the ice cream, but he don't want to be touched by you. By me, yes. <laughs> it, it was me who was fully shining. And so the further I reached for him, the more he rotated. He's like, like the hands of a clock. He was going around the ice cream, still eating it, but not letting you pet him. Yeah, the little stinker, man. But So it took about a week for him to, to speak to me again, if you will. <laughs> um But y'all, remembering your pet fondly and all the joy that they brought is definitely one way to help you process the grief you may be feeling when you lose a pet. So how do you live without them? Here are a few more ways to help you cope. Psychologytoday.com has a helpful article entitled Seven Self-Care Essentials While Grieving the Death of a Pet. Number one, set aside the time to grieve in your own way and release your emotions. 
It can be very difficult to stop, right? Stop the never-ending business that is life. But it is so important to give yourself some time alone or some special time with a loved one. That may mean you got to take a day off or two of work. For us, a good way to stop the madness is to just turn off the noise in the house. Like no TV, no social media, just quiet. And then allow your emotions to just flow freely. I think this is probably important in the grieving process of anything, but please don't forget to allow yourself to feel when you lose your pet. We were really hurting after we lost Wiggles. Mm -hmm. I swear we talked about him every day for years after that. Mm -hmm. And it was my way of coping. I just, we had to keep saying all the stories over and over again that we loved, all the, the happy memories. Yeah. The second self-care essential from psychology today is make sure that you continue to meet your own basic needs. Be sure you eat, even though you may not have much of an appetite. Uh, Just fill yourself with nutritious food because grieving is hard on the body and actually needs a lot of fuel to process everything. That was actually a line in Downton Abbey from the Dowager Countess. She says, nothing makes you hungrier or more tired than grief. Right, right. And another thing to consider are your other pets, if you have other pets, and the care that they still need. So try your best to keep the same routine with your other pets, right? If you fed them at a certain time of the day, took them on a walk, keep that same routine so they at least have that continuity. It's likely that your other dogs or pets will be grieving the loss as well. So... You know, the best way to help them grieve is to give them some extra attention, give them some extra love, and keep an eye on them. You know, make sure they're still eating and drinking and things like that. Another comforting thing to do is to memorialize the memory of your pet, as we did with Wiggles. My mom had him cremated, and his ashes are in his little box with a plaque on it. She also has a few framed pictures of him. Yeah, just hang on to that memory. It'll bring you comfort. And all of these ideas can help you grieve the loss of your sweet pup. Whether you get a new pup or not is entirely up to you. I've read that if you have kids, you may want to wait a little longer so that the new pup doesn't feel like a replacement. Although I know many people find that a new addition to the family helps them to overcome the loss. So feel your way through that. Do what's best for you. But those are just some things to consider about getting a new dog. Now, keep listening, and we will be right back with Insta Dog of the Week. Aloha Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of aloha. Genesis Beloth, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California, but she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work, but it's the best work. That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. Shopalohamama.com. It's time for Instadog of the Week. You all will not believe this pug you're about to meet. (laughs) Please help (laughs) us celebrate Mr. Biggie, the notorious (laughs) P-U-G. That's at Mr. Biggie. M-R dot B-I-G-G-I-E. Gabe. There is so <laughs> okay. much to say about Mr. Biggie. Where should we even start? I, uh, the bio, I guess. <laughs> <They pull it laughs> okay, up. Let's, all right, let's oh take a look goodness. at him. So what does his bio tell us? Uh, making humans smile since 16. <laughs> hails from Texas, and he has a business account. In case uh, you're interested in doing business with Mr. Biggie, he has a Gmail that you oh can reach out to him with. <laughs> Gosh. And it says Mr. Biggie and at Sister Dallas Bear. So he has a sister. She's not a pug, but you could also check out her page as like a bonus. 
Or maybe uh, we'll feature her later on down the line because she's a real pretty dog too. But let's see what we've got here. So they have some stories across the top. They've got Daddy Bear. I love it because they put bear at the end of everything. Uh, Daddy Bear, Mama Bear, Biggie Bear. They even have a story that's fan art. And it's super cute. Fans just draw Biggie <laughs> and they send it over. And one of them's uh, like a wanted poster, which uh, is really funny. He's, he is notorious. He is. He is. <laughs> and then Biggie also has a thing for banana. So there's uh, a whole story section about his banana eating. He's a little obsessive. Yes. And he really is just the cutest little pug. And you are going to crack up when you see all these photos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's see what else. One of my absolute favorites is it's down quite a ways, but it's at Christmas time, y'all. And he's got a Santa hat on. And in front of him is a plate of tamales. Vegan tamales, to be oh, exact. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I would lo- I would love to try y'all's vegan tamales. Um, I'm proud of him for just sitting there and not snatching one of those, frankly. I don't know if we could pose a Jack Russell like that without a lot of training. Oh, we just- he just sighted you. <laughs> so that- to just sighed at me. Okay, well, apparently I'm wrong. Yeah, the, right. the caption says, pugs plus vegan tamales equals wuv, wuv, wuv. <laughs> 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 and there's pictures of him frolicking in the blue bonnets because he is a fellow Texan. He is. Oh, my gosh. What's your absolute favorite? There really are so many. It's absolutely hilarious, y'all. Okay, my favorite one. I mean, there's so many, but it's he's wearing this pair of glasses that he often wears. He's sitting in front of a computer with the NASDAQ on it and he says, <laughs> pretending I know how the stock market works. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's pretending. <laughs> He's pretending because we all just pretend when it comes to the stock market. Well, I feel like there's a trend because there's another picture that I love where he's sitting in like this little kid's, it's pink, little chair, like at a little kid's desk. And he's got like a headset on, right? Like his Zoom, like he's in a Zoom meeting almost. Uh. <laughs> and he's looking right at the camera and it says, when you lie on your resume, but still get the job. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oh, he's man. he's faking it till he makes it. <laughs> Biggie. Apparently. Couple more things. Biggie does have a calendar out. I know 2021 is almost over, but he has a Biggie Bear 2021 calendar that you could get. I'm ho- hopefully they'll come out with 2022. Well, that would yeah. be awesome. I mean, in the very least, you can cut out the pictures and frame them because oh my gosh, they're so out cute. of control. And the last thing I'll share is that there's a little video of Daddy Bear and Biggie Bear doing yoga. And he's just out, passed out on his back. <laughs> <laughs> but but hey, Biggie Bear parents, you guys have the same carpet as we do. And I'm like, hey, we have a similar style. Texan, same carpet. Love tamales. <laughs> <Okay>. We're in business <laughs> here. We're kindred spirits, I think. And to be fair, we don't know how long they were doing yoga before he passed out. So that Well, that's been. true. He could have been working really hard. <laughs> he, was, he worked it. <laughs> oh, man. Be sure to check out all the positive and notorious fun at Mr. Biggie. That's at Mr. B-I-G-G-I-E. He and his family will bring a smile to your face for sure. Full show. Next up is Puppy Parent Replies. We asked you amazing puppy parents to share your favorite memories of your dear furry babies that have skipped over the rainbow bridge. Here are some of those wonderful replies. David S. says, My favorite memory of Copper was coming in after playing in the snow and it looked like he had snow pants on because his (laughs) legs were so covered in snow. It made me laugh every time and he loved nothing more than a roll in the snow. Carson loves the snow too. Yes, snow with dogs, it's great memories. Valerie P. says, my baby girl, Julie, she graced me with her presence for 16 and a half years, and she was here on the earth for 17 years, and she went to heaven last year. And I'm so grateful for the time I shared with her and got to be her mommy. There's a sweet picture of mommy giving her sweet papa kiss. Mm -hmm. 
Colleen C. says, Marley passed away this July at the age of four. Oh, wow. That's young, so young yeah. for a She was my soul sister and I miss her every day. I'm so lucky to have been her mom for three of her four years. And that's the thing. You have to focus on how they improved your life and the wonderful memories that they brought. Yeah. That's the only way I could get through it. And like you mentioned, this pup having passed so young, you really don't know. You don't know. I I mean, I know it's the same with people too, but you don't know how long you're going to have your pet. Try to make the best of that time, right? Make some good memories. Jackie C. says, it's been almost five years since we lost our beloved Rosie. She was nearly 18 years old and such a character. She could remove the green fur from a tennis ball in five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) She was such fun. And we tell our other JRs all about her. (laughs) I love that part. Hey, let me tell you about the legend of Rosie. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Terry T says, this is Patricia, and she includes a sweet image. Um, Mm -hmm. She passed away on 9-21-20. She was 14 and a half. I miss her being in the kitchen waiting for something to drop. She was my shadow and late night snack buddy. Oh, Oh. (laughs) that's always nice to have a late night snack buddy. If anything will rouse Carson from a dead sleep, it's the bag of chips. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Debbie S. says, my Miss Jessie May, age 16, just crossed this past Thursday. Oh, man, it's fresh. Yeah. And she says, I miss her terribly. She was such a diva and had a sweet tooth. Oh my gosh, I love this. Her favorite dessert being strawberry shortcake. Hold the strawberries. And keep the healthy part. (laughs) White cake and whipped cream only was her favorite. (laughs) Oh, Oh, I love that. Michelle C. says, my Emily was 21 years, seven months old. That is one of the oldest Jack Russells I've ever heard of. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, good genes, and they clearly took good care yeah. of her. She's new to the Rainbow Bridge as of only 15 days ago. Wow, another another new loss. Wow. And, and now she's young oh. over the Rainbow Bridge, and she's ready to have fun. Michelle C. says, it helps me to find peace when I remind myself that I did not allow kidney disease to make my little girl any sicker than she had become in recent weeks. So yeah, that's definitely a tough decision when you have to let a dog go. But seeing them suffer like that is just, I, it's so hard. It is. It is. You have to find that balance of letting them go and easing their suffering, right? Yeah. And then Linda G says, I lost my beloved boys five months apart. Oh, how tough. They look like they're their best Best buddies buddies, too. (laughs) Look at them in the bed. It's been devastating. And she adds, no matter how long we have them, it's never long enough. And that is so true, Linda. To you, fellow puppy parents, thank you for sharing your hearts. And we are so sorry for all of your losses. We understand how difficult this is. We leave you with a poem to hold in your heart. They will not go quietly from sympathymessageideas.com. They will not go quietly, the pets who've shared our lives. In subtle ways, they let us know their spirit still survives. Old habits still can make us think we hear them at the door. Or step back when we drop a tasty morsel on the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Our feet still go around the place the food dish used to be. And sometimes, coming home at night, we miss them terribly. And although time may bring new friends and a new food dish to fill, that one place in our hearts belongs to them and always will. Special thanks to the amazingly talented pianist Neil Archer for his melodic rendition of How Do I Live Without You. Y'all, do yourself a favor and check out his YouTube page to hear the rest of his awesome pieces. You can also find Neil at neilarcher.net, on Facebook at Neil Archer Piano Entertainer, and on Instagram and Twitter at Neil Archer Piano. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell Parents.
Say bye, Carson. We'd love to connect with you online at jackrussellparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrussellparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. (laughs) 